how you could get the money, how you could control it, how you could finance it. And then, of course, do you have the users, the tenant, the market, to get something done? And if you remember this chart, this is, this is the business I'm in. Sometimes we're in this business, but I like staying in this business. You have to determine which part of the business you want to be in. And remember, however you add value, you want to make sure you add it in, a very, in the very best way you possibly can. Um, there are lots of different ways to do it, and you can own it, and we never got into it in this particular case. Now, if you take development two, which begins on March 18th, I know Marielle is going to. Who else wants to take it? You should sign up. Yeah. And uh, because it's it's March 18th for eight straight Saturdays. Um, no, because we want to be Afternoon Saturdays or mornings? Mornings. Morning. Heck, I'm not an afternoon guy. I want to get it out of the way, wake up at you know 5.30, get on the road by no later than 6.15, so you're here by 7.45, you're ready to start at 8 a.m. Is that you also teach that class? I'm teaching that class, yeah. Any concession? Pardon? Are you giving any concessions? Concessions? What on earth are you talking about? No, the concession is that you have me, right? And, and, and the reason why I'm mentioning this, no, the, the reason why I'm mentioning this is it's just a little pitch that I just realized I can give you. No, it's just that I'm going to teach you case studies. We're going to go into cases on real deals that were built in Boston, Pittsburgh, New York, Florida, uh, and then whatever else I can come up with. Did you say Boston or Austin? Boston. <laughs> um, no, it was Boston. Boston. Um, so, um, but yes, yeah, so I teach a case study, and, and by teaching the case study, we'll go through each deal and figure out the actual issues, the disciplines, and the numbers. And once you figure out how to do that, if you can do critical thinking, then that's great. And, and we'll talk about how parties finance the deal, what options there are, how you can deal with these things. I won't teach you the finances completely. I'll teach you a little bit more about how to get the numbers. Somebody else has got to teach you how to run those cash flows. What was that, Monica? Yeah, Dr. Gordy. I mean, once you get it from him, you'll know it straight from everybody else. That's for sure. Um, so, um, but my goal is to make sure you understand how to look at a deal from an initial acquisition standpoint. To understand what are the parties and parts to it and, and all these issues. And if you understand this, then you'll be able to go through this development process. I mean, this is no different than understanding that vertical chart that I talked to you about. That's just a different way to look at it. Um, and you know, deal structures can be very different. Uh, and one of the deals that we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about how they finance a 900 unit apartment building um, and whether or not they get it in the right way. Um, and all the different players in the deals. Um, so, you know, there are lots of players, there are lots of part, parts to that. Um, and you have to make sure you use all the resources. Also, in Development two, we go through a major study project as well. And we'll just do it again. But this time, you'll have the opportunity to run through the numbers and get it right. So I'm serious about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, one thing that I, I, I talked to some of you, you've got to pick up the phone. You've got to call got to resource and research information. You've got the best librarian resources here at the university. I'm surprised some of you didn't use some of that. I'm pleased that you did a lot of that, but I mean, there you've got all these great resources which are here in the university, and then the worst that can happen, you found out, you called up, and either they talked to you or they didn't, right? But they did. Ultimately, right? So, um, so once again, I just leave you with this chart. I mean, if you can figure out your place, your role in the development process, and the tasks that you perform in that, then uh, you'll be able to be successful at it. Professor, yes. Is there, do you have 
similar chart in percentage points? You really want all the numbers, I, don't I you? The I to the owner of the company I'm working for. So so I want to understand the percentage points. Every deal is going to be different. Just like you saw hotel, residential, office, retail, commercial, industrial, hospitality is different than any of those, as you knew. I mean, uh, it, it could be a, a hospital, anything. The percentages are going to be different. Um, for example, in land, I'll just give you an example. Rule of thumb, if you buy a building lot for a home, generally you don't want the price of that building lot to be more than 20 or 25 percent of what the total finished price would be of a, of a house. Now, can I apply that same number to a high-rise office or residential site? No. no. Right? But that's just a, a simple rule of thumb. Now, when it comes to packaging, planning, and entitling, it depends on the complexity of each jurisdiction's rules and regulation and the timeline that it takes. And that's why I said, I don't know what the companies are, and whether that $25,000 or the $25 was per foot makes sense as a relative cost here. I do know that if you're, I'm going to say, if your land costs are more than 10 or 15% of the total deal price, something's out of whack. Just generally speaking, on a big major deal. But by the way, gee, land prices here, if it, if it was a house, was 20 or 25%. But then again, what was in the land? The streets? Do they have curb and gutter? Do they have water and sewer? Do they have septic tank? So it depends on where you are and what you're doing. So I can't give you a percentage unless I know the circumstances. Is there a certain um, resource or, or data that uh, place that we can go to to kind of figure out um, what what every uh, market from retail and you know compared to like a certain area? Yeah, there's lots of retail, and that's why you go to the Nova Library and Susan Berkman. For example, CCIM, which you saw some of you had charged, they have guidelines. Smith Travel Research, SDR, and HVS, they have the hotel guidelines. They're guidelines. No. A lot of these, a lot of these research and brokerage firms mm -hmm. will issue what we'll call general pro formas or general uh, statistical guidelines. Let's see, the uh, the National Multifamily Housing Council, they'll issue every year what have been the uh, the expense ratios in various parts of the country, and so you can find out the information, and then you can use it as a guide. Gotcha. But then I, you've got to dig down for that market. I think I said it wrong. Like, let's say, let's say we go and look in Palm Beach County, right? Is there a chart or data that you can go and say that okay, Palm Beach County retail market takes this, um, hospitality this. Yes, like there are lots of charts, but you have to know where you're going you have through. To go to so, for example, so. if you want to look at the retail market, you might say, I want to go to Cushman and Wakefield, talk to the brokers, or go to whomever is the expert in that particular marketplace and see who's amassing that data. Right. Or you can go to the Business Development Board. They may have that information. Right. Or you go to Marcus and Millichap because they track the multifamily housing market. And then you compare that to the National uh, Housing uh, Council's data and see if the two match up. There's so many different sources. That's why it's a matter of learning to use the sources, going to the libraries, if you will. And then looking at comps and seeing what makes sense for that particular marketplace. So I wish I could tell you there's a good rule of thumb for tally, but it's just general guidelines. And once you get them, then you begin to learn it. So can I drop myself into a market and guesstimate? I can. I can. But I've got 35 years of experience doing it. But you've got to at least look at those data sources first. That's why Dr. Fred and I can look at these performance and say, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Or something's not working. That's why when I looked at your performance, I said, wait, 4.7 million square feet? There's a billion or two billion dollars worth of retail sales right there. And you just kind of know after you've looked at those numbers. But then I would now go to Esri or Demographics Now and dig down because the data was all there. All of you had the data, but you didn't source it perhaps deep enough. Except maybe it would help you if you actually did source most of it. And then you got tripped up just on that ADR per square foot. But it was close if you just did the next level of math. So, so um, I'm happy to talk to anybody about.
about their tests, about anything else. I will figure out in the next week or so what your grades are, and I'll hand them in, and you'll get your grades. How do you want us to submit these to you? So, Evaluations so are you, I, I noticed that I got, I think on Blackboard I got your reports, but I want to have the digital copy of the presentation and the report, not just simply the written report. And then I want your spreadsheets, the live Excel spreadsheets. So can we email it to you or just upload that to Huh? Can we email it to you? You can email it to me, because I'm only getting, you know, three mm -hmm. copies. I'm not getting 11. Right. I'm just getting one from each team. That won't be overwhelming. So I just want a digital okay. copy of each thing. If I don't get it the next day, then I'll yeah. harangue you. Get out of here. That's horrible. Okay. Uh, well, whoever sends it, CC your team members. That way you know yes. that I got it, which is fine. And then, uh, you know, I've got about you know, however many days to figure out what your grades are. So right now, I've signed up for Tuesdays and Thursdays. But I've been told that there's something changing in the pipeline yes. as far as the report. This is it. This is the last Tuesday, Thursday. Last Saturday. Right. Saturday. After, next, in the fall, everything becomes Saturday. No, in, yes. the summer, in the summertime. Oh, in the summer, too, as well. After, after the end of this second winter semester? Right. Okay, that's the so, so it's the end of the second winter semester. So the next eight weeks. So they're no longer doing weekdays? No. no. He said that email in December. I didn't get the memo. No, All I can tell you no, is that on March 18th at 8 a.m., I'm ready to start with development two. Oh, okay. You've already had development. Oh, that's, on that, uh, that's on Saturdays? Saturday. Saturday. If you're not signed up, it's too late anyway. That's, that's a weekend. Saturday, 8 a.m. to noon. I will tell you. No traffic on Saturday morning, folks. Not a just think how much less time you'll be spending getting here. Oh, okay, so you got just The first semester of the master program for accounting, the first Saturday I realized about 10 in the morning I made a big mistake. It sucked because you want the air conditioning works in this room on Saturday morning. Yes, it works in what? Barely. No, we're talking 10 years ago. No, okay, but you're stronger. Better now. No, older and more tired. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> sure. What do you want to do? I know. Fine. What's the email? 1218. Check your email on December 18th. What do I have on the I highly recommend it. Yeah. 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 Yes, I think it's a problem. See you later. That's the next project. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I have all the answers here, so. Um, are you? Are you going to another one? Yeah. Let's figure out what to do. Let me email you. Same place, baseball? Yeah. Position. At home. Right. That's how it goes. Wow. 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 Got to be no, my, my best experience yeah, would be honest. from baseball. Really? You have to have your calculator. Am I going to see you now? Are you all ball, ball no. See? No, I, I was a lefty. So I, 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 have I played everything. I even played third place. Okay. Okay. So how much people do like third play or second short? That's all I played. Second, short, seventh. Yes. Yeah, you should do that. You know, I played third. Wonderful. I played third. I made the other play. Yeah,